Hey guys, I recently took a short trip to Florida. It was Wednesday morning through Saturday evening. So I had three nights and almost four days and I was visiting my parents so I wasn't worried about the weight of the items because I wasn't going to be hiking around. I was planning on only painting maybe a little bit during the day and just in the evenings. But space was definitely at a premium because I only brought a personal item with me. Basically like a backpack sized item without a carry-on or a suitcase so you know it had to fit all my toiletries, my clothes, so I had very limited space for art supplies. So this is what I brought with me and it turned out to be plenty. So I wanted to show what I brought and then also show, you know, what I ended up using, not using, and what I made with it. So these are the sketchbooks I brought. Maybe I'll go through that in a little bit. So we'll set that aside. This has the most stuff in it, so we'll go to that next. We'll start with this baggie and this is by Yubi. It came in a pack of three different ones. They're really cute. So... My watercolors are in here, a portable keyboard in case I wanted to do some writing, and a phone stand so I could, you know, write using my phone and Google Docs. So I did not end up having time for writing, so that, you know, we'll set that aside. That was not used. Um, I brought this, and this has, it's a little container for, you know, painting out and about for water and the clips. I did not use, end up using that because I ended up only painting in the evenings and obviously you know since I was sitting at a kitchen table I had a cup of water there and this. I did end up using this. It's like a little palette that I had gotten at Jackson's Art Supply at some point. I had specifically gotten it for travel because it is obviously very light and it's flat so it doesn't take up like any space. This time I chose to go with the Roman Schmall travel palette because again it's small enough, but it is a bit hefty, but that was irrelevant. Right before I went, I fixed it up and set it up because it was kind of all out of order and like the swatch card in it was old and not relevant. So I just cut off this from the back of the swatch card that came with it because everything had gotten rearranged. I had taken out the insert so that I could do seven in the middle row. If you use the insert that comes with it, you can only fit six in, but like this, you can fit seven in. So these are the colors. So I really love this um, titanium gray. That one gets used a lot. And this is Potter's Pink. And this is a very granulating pink. I forget which one it is. It doesn't have very high tinting strength, but it's definitely very granulating and very pretty. I think out of all the colors, I mean, they all got some good use, but, but that one is definitely my favorite. And now I'm thinking, I feel like I need to get one of these for all my palettes. It's the, I think, titanium gray. It's the same as the buff titanium except it's gray and this one is beige so I really like that one so let's take a look at what I brought in here now first of all this is a Hobonichi pencil pouch I had gotten it when they had it back when they had some kind of sale where you can buy this one or some of the other sizes but and they had like five options of which one they would send you but you didn't know which one it was a mystery one so it was like a really good discount but you didn't know for sure which one you would get and I ended up getting this color they don't have this specific color available on their website anymore, but they do have this size available still. I and mean, I really like it. It's You can tell it's a little bit stained, but it's really hard to see because the color is so dark. And inside is a pretty light blue. And then there's a pocket in the back. And I made these um, ATC cards a while back out of watercolor paper, but I don't think I've ever used them on all my travels. But they're there just in case I want to make some ATC cards. And then back here is a little Hobonichi notebook of the like A6 size and it's a really good size to just slip in there and I bring it for mainly for like jotting down thoughts and notes. I had some time to read on the airplane and in the evenings and this is the book that I read. This is the artist I recently discovered. She has a really cute style. Uh, her name is Tijana Draws on Instagram. The book she recommended was Find Your Artistic Voice by Lisa Congdon. When I looked on Kindle Unlimited, which I currently have, it just happens to be on there. So if you have Kindle Unlimited, you can get this for free. This artist said that this book helped her to figure out what she wanted to do with her art, find her style, all that stuff. So I was like, that sounds like a really good read. So I read that and I would definitely recommend that book as well. 
Uh, I had some really good insights while I was reading it. And actually, one of the things the book helped me do was think of almost like a mission statement for my art in order to help me be more consistent in my style or to communicate what I'm trying to communicate better. Almost like, this is not what the author said, but this is what I took away from it. Almost like a mission statement when you open a new business and you have to have some kind of like a mission statement that you would present to investors, like all that kind of thing. So this is almost kind of the same concept where you think about what it is you're trying to communicate and how to best communicate it. What you're trying to have your art do and what you're trying to have your art make other people feel. I don't know if that makes sense. But anyways, I would definitely recommend that book. So on vacation, I'm just sharing this because it's art related, even though I was reading, but it was about art. And, and these pages are perforated. So I just literally just kind of took it out. It's really easy. So that's a good little thing to have. So that goes there and then inside and I change it up whenever I travel based on what I think I'm going to need that time. So let me go through all the things in here in detail. So these were the pencils that I brought. I just picked out just a few colors to see that I kind of thought might be useful. Like this would be good for cheeks and like obviously a white and a black. I took the Prismacolor ones because they're kind of thinner than other pencils and also they're shorter so they were like taking up less space. And I love this Ar Argyle Rose, Argyle Rose, I don't know, I'm not sure what, oh, Clay Rose is a really pretty muted rose kind of color. These Holbein pencils, a pretty blue, a pretty purple raisin color, which is very dark, it's almost black, so it's like a nice substitute for a black, and this really pretty pink. And then this kind of beige color from Prismacolor, I obviously love that one. And this color, Terracotta from Prismacolor, are like my two favorites. That's why there's like barely anything left. And this Crimson Red, which is a really nice strong red. And this is a fluorescent, a neon green. I had some tape in here, washi tape, like a thin one, but I didn't use it for anything. But it was there just in case I wanted to tape something in or whatever. But then I had this pencil, which is a red and a blue for sketching. It's a Prismacolor Very Thin. And I did end up using the blue. I didn't really need the red because I had the other red. But it's good for for details and it's good for sketching and if you bring that it's already like two pencils in one so it's kind of convenient for travel. I brought this coal erase pink did not end up using that I just used my regular pencil this is the 0.7 millimeter pentel so like a completely basic one I use that a lot. This pen I used a little bit the big ballpoint pen that's my favorite pentel maybe touch I'm not sure yeah pentel sign pen did not use that pilot razor point did not use that those I brought more for journaling and I didn't end up doing that a hobonichi pen did not use that because I didn't really end up journaling while I was there these two micron pens an O2 and an O3 actually did not use end up using these at all either this little mono zero eraser I did use that <laughs> I love that little thing and it's so light and it's really small. It's great for travel. So let's look in here. I did use this. I have two Poscas in here. These are the super fine bullet nibs. So they're not the felt tip ones, they're like plastic ones, but they're very thin and small. So they're pretty good for travel too. I just use them for travel. This water brush, which is like a mini travel size. I did use that. I love this water brush. I don't even put water in it. It's just when you paint with it, it washes colors out so easily. It's so easy to rinse it. So it's very convenient for that. This little a kneaded eraser obviously did not end up needing that. This eraser, the mono eraser, and if you twist it, it comes out. It's like the bigger sizes that, you know, that they sell everywhere, but this is like a little travel size use that a ton. I love that eraser. It's really good. This is white gouache from Karen Dash. And the reason I brought this one is because this is 0.34 ounce. So it's 10 milliliters. So it's really tiny for a gouache. So it's a great travel size. And I did use that. I'll, sometimes I'll mix watercolors into it to make them more opaque. So it's great for that. If you just bring a white gouache, Sometimes that's enough if you bring watercolors and a white gouache to basically create your own gouache. I brought this little 
This one is great for travel because this is the Coom eraser and they obviously work really well, but, and this is just like a one hole, very small one. So it's great for travel. This little spray bottle, this, I did not use that. This for like, you know, if I needed to do that, but it, I didn't use that either. I mean, I don't really do full on like pencil sketches where I do like a ton of shading and then refills for the pencil just in case the 4.7 lead but I did not need any refills. This is from, from AliExpress. I didn't use this one. I did use this one. This is Escoda Perla size 10. So it's nice and big. And I did use that. If I put this on, it's huge. Look at how big that is. It's really nice. So these were the two brushes I used, so I could have left the other one home. So that's what was all in here. And I love this because all of this fits in there and then it zips up like no issues. It's almost like a magic little pouch. Like it, it fits pretty much anything you put in it. These were the sketchbooks slash journals I brought. My Hobonichi cousin 2024. I didn't end up doing anything in there while I was on vacation. So I could have left that at home. I mean, it's flat, so it didn't take up too much you know, space or anything. Then I brought this Honda Mule. This is not the 100% cotton. This is like not as good of a paper as the 100% cotton ones, I'm sure. Like I'm not, I'm not crazy about this one, which is probably why I ended up not using it. Actually, I wasn't wanting to do like full on watercolor paintings. I was more doing like idea type sketches. So I did not end up using that. And then I brought this art creation little sketchbook that I recently started um, in one of my recent videos. I did use that one. So I put a bookmark to where vacation started. So I tried like a folk art type bird and then I did like a more one that, you know, kind of like a little bit more of my version of it. And then I tried like a witchy kind of girl and I was not happy with this at all. You know what they say, like all the art, bad art goes into the good. Like you can't make good art without making bad art. You got to make bad art sometimes to sort of, first of all, to practice, but also to figure out what you don't want and what you don't like. So if I can look at it and analyze it and be like, well, certain pieces of it I like, but what don't I like? Then I can can figure out how to avoid doing that in the future. This was the first night. It was 6, 12, 24. And I think I must have gotten frustrated with how this came out to where for the next one, for the same day, this was that same night, I ended up doing this. This is the Seated da Dancer with Pink Stockings by Toulouse Lautrec. They had a book and I just copied it from the book. I just used the colored pencils here because I, I got frustrated with that situation. So I decided to do like a master copy just for practice. And then this, this was also that same night I was laying in bed and they had a, has a lot of flowers and plants all over. So they had this big thing of uh, leaves. So I just drew that with my ballpoint pen. And then this was like a thing they had piled some blankets and pillows on from when they like did our beds. And um, there was a painting there. So I just kind of laid in bed and, and did these two scenes. So these three were the first night. Then the next night I did, and this is basically the same idea except i try to avoid all the things i did not like about this one i try to avoid and do this oh and here's how i use the wash i mix the white wash in with blue and red and then i was able to layer the more opaque flowers on top of the darker green background because i had the white wash and over here i had the white wash so i was able to do some like lines so i was a lot happier with how this came out than than that first one, right? You know, I'm not crazy about it, but I was definitely a lot happier with it. That's what I was saying. You know, you can make some bad art and then try to learn from it and then do it again, avoiding the things you really hated. <laughs> and then this was also from the toulouse Le Trek book. This was actually on the cover. So I did that, but this time I used watercolors. Obviously, this and I think even the pink dancer they were done in oils I think so you know I used pencils and here I used watercolors so it's not going to be an exact copy but it's still a good good way to practice then this was that same night this was the next page I did this is colored pencils and this is just graphite and a little bit of colored pencil and watercolor on top like after reading that book finding your artistic voice I decided I kind of wanted to go more into this direction with like a more sort of 
witchy kind of theme, spiritual sort of witchy theme. I wanted to move in that direction. And I explored all these themes in my art in the past, but I just wanted to kind of focus more in on it. And then this was also still that same night. So this is night all night two. I basically did three spreads each night. So that's one spread, two spread, and this is the third spread. And that's one of my like newer type girls. And I, I do like how this came out. It's got like a very peaceful sort of feel to it. Like I love the forest. And here I layered the white gouache with watercolor mixed in on top again. And I, I don't like how that came out. It's just a hand holding a wand. The pages here are really small. So a lot of the ideas I had, I would start drawing them and then I run out of space. If I, if I had more space, like the moon would be further away. You know, there'd be more going on. But I was like, you know what, whatever. And I just left it at that. So white clouds on top with the gouache. Okay, this is the next night. And this is that artist I would mention, Tijana Draws. Instead of doing a master copy of Toulouse Lautrec, I decided to try one of her drawings. So this is one of her drawings from one of her sketchbooks, I think. So I wanted to recreate that. And then I went back to doing My Girls. And I tried one, like a similar kind of animal there. And then still doing those um, folk art type birds. And I like how that came out out for the most part except I would get rid of the fox and I don't know maybe that snake as well but I like the birds right there it's and her eyes closed it feels very peaceful again very kind of introspective like inner world type of feeling which is kind of what I wanted so I like how that came out then this was oh this is so that was it for that day this is already the next day right so then I did another one like this and like this so that night I kind of drew a bunch of these and then I ran out of time to really color them in so a lot of them are not really colored in fully this is that gray that titanium gray that I really like and then I wanted to play around with other skin colors. Still playing around with like other, you know, just kind of having more variety. That was the end of that night. And then the next night I was already on the airplane and I did not want to do watercoloring on the airplane. I did not take my little, you know, water cup out. So these are all in pencil and I'm still gonna go back and color them in. I did take out one of my pencils. This is this one. See, it's like a really pretty muted grayish pink color. It's really pretty. So I did that and then that. So I'll definitely go and color them in. It's a sketchbook, so I could just leave it in graphite, but I like coloring things in at least a little bit so I can play around with different color palettes and discover what I like more. Because like over here, like I don't like how it came out, but I also don't like the color palette. And this color palette I like more. So it's definitely important to play around with different color palettes. Like do I want it to be bright and vibrant or do I want it to be muted do I want it to be dark and moody you know just trying out different types of colors is important it's almost just as important as like practicing the actual drawing part so I'll definitely go back and color them in this one there's some graphite transfer on here so I'll probably clean it up before coloring it in so I did that one still that same night on the airplane and then that another one of those birds kind of just doing it like with the beak like that and like no head <laughs> kind of like that so I like did it again and then that and I, I like this kind of like graphic look it's going to be fun to color in I think and then like a deer that's very sort of loose like a very loose style deer okay and then all the rest so I did these four spreads because I was using a pencil so I had time to do four spreads instead of just three but I do have to go back and color them all in so that was pretty much it so now you guys have seen you know what I brought with me and what I ended up using obviously I could have gone away with bringing less of this stuff and just this book and not even bothered with these two but things as you just never know for sure what you're going to end up wanting to use you just have to kind of try to guesstimate to the best of your ability this little you know this art creation series is really great because as you can see I was able to use pencils graphite and watercolors with no problem and some of the watercolors were pretty layered like you know this one you know like these two pages are fully covered in watercolor so and this was pretty watery and had multiple layers because I added more color to it to build up values and this I probably you know use more color as well like multiple layers to build up the value so all of it was covered in a lot of water i don't think it's even 
maybe there's a bit of a buckling but not really so this is great for travel you can get away with just bringing this one book and using all your mediums in it with no problem and as you can see it barely takes up any space it's like not even the size of my hand so i hope you guys enjoyed that um thank you for watching and i'll see you later bye